All right, gang, welcome back. We're talking today about exam one review, problem number five. We're getting ready to make a hundred on our exam. And we're gonna talk about, ooh, this is a thermal expansion problem, okay? As a matter of fact, this is a statically indeterminate thermal, ex thermal expansion problem, okay? Let's see if we can do it. Maybe y'all can help me here. Here we go. So we've got a bolt, a steel bolt with an aluminum sleeve around the outside of it. Now. Steel and aluminum, two different materials, probably when they heat up, don't grow at the same rate, right? As a matter of fact, look here, material properties, steel grows at 14 times 10 to the negative six, that's 0. 0.000014, right? Uh, and alpha, or for aluminum, right, the, the uh, thermal coefficient of expansion for aluminum is 23. So not quite twice, but almost twice as much expansion in the aluminum than, than it would for the steel. That means that the aluminum is gonna grow at a much faster rate, okay? So it says the steel bolt is tightened on the aluminum sleeve until the washers just make contact. So it's tightened up just enough to just touch, okay? There's no pretension in the bolt, okay? The original temperature is 30 degrees C. It's raised to 110 degrees C. So that's a delta of, let's see, 30 to 180 degrees C, right? Find the normal stress in the bolt and in the sleeve. So that's sigma stress, isn't it? We're looking for this, okay? Sigma aluminum and sigma steel, okay? That's what we're looking for. Well, in order to do that, we're gonna need probably, the area is easy enough to calculate, isn't it? The other thing we need is probably the uh, force in the unit, in the uh, each of the materials. So let's just do the easy things first, okay? Let's calculate some areas first, okay? So area of the steel, area of the aluminum, okay? The steel is just pi r squared, isn't it? Pi, what's the, what's the diameter? Diameter is five millimeters, so the radius is 2.5. A squared. And then this one down here is what? It's pi r squared of the, the outside, which is the uh, outside is 10, so let's call it 5, minus pi r squared of the inside, which is 3. Okay? Let's get us some numbers here, right? On 3.14159. Does this calculator have a pi button? I don't know times 2.5 squared equals 19.63, and that's gonna be millimeters squared. Let's see, in this other one down here, what's this guy gonna be? Um, times five squared equals, Oh, we could go minus 3.14159 times 3 squared equals 50.26. All right, so I think what you got here is this. You got some force divided by 50.26. Point two six, and we got some force divided by what? Nineteen point six three. These are millimeters squared. Now the force. Okay, if I look at this whole thing, if I cut it in half, right? There's the maybe the bolt and the nut. Right there's the end of the thing. If I just cut it in half right there, what do I have? I have some force that's pulling on the bolt, and then I got some force that's pushing on the sleeve. And we know from statics that the force pushing on the sleeve is equal to the force pulling on the bolt, right? Those two things have to be the same. I got an upward force, that downward force has to be the same to cancel it out. So these two things right here have the same exact force, I'm gonna know that force could be the same. No idea how you find that force, but there it is, okay? Now, what else do we know about this system? That those compatibility equations, here's what we know, okay? As this thing starts to thermally expand, you know, 
the, the sleeve is going to expand and then the bolt is going to like pull back on it, right? So it's going to expand from tension from a thermal expansion and contract from uh, just PL over AE, just from force, right? But here's what I know. When it finally gets all equalized, all normalized, the amount that this bolt is going to stretch is the same as the amount that that aluminum is going to stretch. Those two numbers have to be the same because that thing is, it, you know, it can't go anywhere else. Because now, if the bolt expanded faster than the aluminum, then maybe the aluminum sleeve would just rattle around on there, right? But we know that the aluminum is going to expand faster than the steel. So it's still going to be tight on there. It's going to be really tight when it heats up, okay? So here's what I like to do, okay, is draw the thermal expansion, draw the whole expansion process, like really exaggerated so we can see it, okay? So here we go. Here's the sleeve, let's say. There's where the sleeve started out. And then you know what? The sleeve got longer. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's greatly exaggerated, okay? It got a lot longer. Okay? And I have this. It got longer due to, I'll say delta due to temperature. How about that? Now, as it got longer, right, the bolt starts pulling it back to like some equilibrium point, some point where... The whole system is going to land once all the all the stretching gets done with, right? And that might be to here. Okay, here's my original sleeve, and here was my thermal expansion. But then, guess what? The force of the of the washers of the bolt pulls it back to this much. Okay, so here was our this was delta T, and then this here, I'm going to call delta F. Okay. That's the amount, or actually, it doesn't matter. This, this, let's do this amount over here. Okay, delta. That's how you make deltas. No! Okay. Uh, delta F. So it grew to a temperature, and then as the bolt pulled back on it, it pulled it back to this point, and this is going to be my equilibrium point. That's going to be the final, that's the final length, okay? Okay. Now, what did the bolt do? The bolt, the bolt started out here. This is the same starting point, okay? So the bolt starts out here. There was the original length of the bolt. Turns out it was the same as that, right? And the bolt grew a little bit due to temperature. There it is. It grew a little bit. Delta T. But it didn't grow as much as the aluminum did because it grows a lot faster, right? And so... The, the aluminum, where the, where the bolt pulled the aluminum back, the aluminum stretches the bolt out. It makes it a little bit longer, okay? And here it is. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay? So this, this bit right here, is due to, is delta of the steel. Uh, well, due to force. Due to force. Let's put an F there. Got to quit making smudgies on my board. Okay. Smudges. All right, so... The aluminum grows longer and then is compressed back because of the bolt. The bolt is stretched a little bit due to temperature and then a little bit more due to the sleeve. Okay? But, right, this is all the same place out here. This equal, the final length here, right? So what does the final length look like? It looks like this. I take this guy here and I get, I get this. I get delta uh, temperature. And I'll put an AL for aluminum, right? This is the sleeve. Minus delta force aluminum, right? Gets me to the equilibrium point. But we know that those two things have to be the same for the steel and the aluminum. That, that equilibrium point, they grow, both grow the same length, okay? This one down here is going to grow delta T for the steel. And then what? Plus delta force in the steel. Okay? You get me? All right, so that equation right there, that's where the money is right there, if you can come up with that, okay? Let's expand that. Okay, I erased that, got us a little more room. We're gonna expand this guy out. So delta, do you remember the equation for that for temperature? Delta equals, it's alpha L delta T. We know alpha, do we know L? We don't know L. We don't know L. Oh no. 
How big is L? How big you want it to be? Let's make it, let's make it uh, 600 millimeters. It's America. We can make it whatever we want. America. Okay? So we know alpha, we know L, and we know the change in temperature. We know everything about that. And the other thing is, is this guy here, delta due to force. What is that equation? That delta is, there's our old friend, PL over AE. Okay? The P is the force that's making it stretch. Now, we just talked about that over here. The force in the steel is going to be the same as the force in the aluminum. That's important. The length... That's good, A and E. Okay, okay. So here we go. You know what? <laughs> you know why the length wasn't in there? <laughs> we just made one up. But you know what? It doesn't matter. I don't think it needs a length. But wait, it's in that equation and in that equation. How can it not need it? Watch this, okay? Watch this. Alpha for the aluminum. Okay, we're doing this guy here, right? Alpha is uh, aluminum. 23 times 10 to the negative 6. Whoa, let's not even make threes. 23 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C times L. Let's just put it in there as L times delta T. Oh, we said that was goes from 30 to 110. So that would be 80 degrees C. Okay. That got that guy, didn't it? Okay. So times, no, minus, sorry, minus uh, this guy, PL over AE, P. We don't know what P is. L, there's an L, divided by A. A of the aluminum, which is 50.26. That's millimeters cubed. No, squared. Squared. Times E. We need this guy for aluminum, which is right there. 70 gigapascals. Oh, we want it. We want newtons over millimeters squared, right? So let's put it in megas, okay? So 70 Salsant newtons over millimeters squared. Okay. Oh, that's one side. And then here's the other side. Equals, do it one more time for the other side, right? Delta, which is going to be 14 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C times L times T, delta T, which is 80. Okay, minus P times L divided by A, A, what is A? 19.63. Okay, millimeters squared times E, which is uh, 200 gigapascals. 200 thousand. Okay, there you go. Do you see now why I don't need L? Do you see it? Look, this term has an L in it. That term has an L in it. That term has an L in it. That term, it all divides away. The L's, it does, the bulk could be any length you want. You're going to get the same exact answer, aren't you? Okay. Okay, let's see if we can simplify this down a little bit, right? Here we go. Okay, on, on. Okay, point, one, two, three, four. 23 times 80 equals, and then, mm, so this is going to be, this is a 1.84 times 10 to the minus 3 minus P times, let's see, 1 divided by 50.26 equals divided by 70,000 equals 2.842 times 10 to the minus seventh, holy cow, is equal to, I'm doing this guy right here, which is 0.1234 one four times 80 is 1.12 times 10 to the minus six plus, right, P times, okay, one divided by 19.63 equals divided by 200, 
thousand. 2.55 times 10 to the minus 7. 7. Okay. Oh, my. Let's get these on the same side. We'll take this guy and put him over here. So, 1. Let's say clear. Point. 00184 plus, no, minus 0 0.00112 equals 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to, then I got to add those two together. So that's going to equal 5.392 times 10 to the minus 7p. So P is going to equal, holy cow, that divided by that, right? Okay, so that equals 1,335.3 newtons. How do you know it's newtons? Remember, we had newtons right there, okay? We had everything reduced down to newtons, okay? There you go. So we just found the force due to the temperature change. So that is going to go up here now. Okay, so let's put that here. 1,335.3 newtons. Okay, and then let's put it over here. 1,335.3 newtons. And dude, we got this. Sigma aluminum is going to be divided by 50.26. 26.56 and what is that? Newtons over millimeter squared? Megapascals. Okay. Sigma steel. What's that going to be? 1335.3 divided by 19.63. 68.02 There you go. How's that? Check. We win. Okay. I hope that helps. I hope you do good on your test. I'll see you on the next video.